So today I'd like to talk about pulmonary testing and clearance for weight loss. Um, we want to know what it is, why it's important, what are they going to do, and what happens if something goes wrong. Hey everybody, it's Jenna. And today, yes, it's a different background. If you haven't seen my other videos with this background, I am currently staying at my brother's house, helping him with a bunch of stuff. Well, my brother and my sister-in-law. So, well, I'm filming in the room I'm staying in, and this is what you get. Continue. Well, pulmonary means relating to lungs. So a pulmonary clearance would just really mean being cleared as a risk assessment for surgery. Well, just like I mentioned in the cardio clearance video, okay, your surgeon just wants to make sure that you have the best possibilities of survival in surgery, and your lungs play a huge part in your survival, kind of like the heart does. So the healthier your lungs, the less of a risk surgeons see you as. Not to say that if you have your pulmonary clearance and you're perfectly fine that something can't happen, but y you get what it is. You're most likely going to have to see a pulmonologist who is a specialist in lungs, and you'll most likely have a bunch of tests run. Uh, they will say whether you're cleared or not and why. Sometimes they may only just say what your risk is, mild, moderate, severe, whatever, and your bariatric surgeon will go ahead from there and decide whether they want to do it or not. They can do a few things to test how well your lungs function. You may only need to get one test, or you might get them all. It depends on what your surgeon wants, your insurance wants, and or what the specialist wants. It makes it a little bit easier to understand what all is going on if you have a little bit of knowledge of what is what your lungs are and how they function. So lungs are part a of a larger system called the respiratory system. You know, your nose is part of your respiratory system. You have tubes that are part of your respiratory system, such and such. Your lungs are just one part. Lungs are the biggest part of your respiratory system, but all the parts function together so you can breathe and process air accordingly. The beginning of your respiratory system actually starts with your airways. These include your nose and mouth as entrances and exits for air, like I said, part of the respiratory system. Um, it also includes your sinuses in here that help regulate temperature and humidity of the air that passes through your nose, your throat, and your windpipe. Windpipe, which is also known as a trachea and your bronchial tubes, which are the two main branches that split off into your lungs. So after we've gone through the airways, we come up to lungs and blood vessels. You have your right lung and your left lung, and both are split into what are called lobes, and each lobe works kind of like a balloon, but it's made out of spongy tissue. You have what they call your pleura, which is a sac that covers each lobe and keeps your lungs separate from your chest wall. At the end of your bronchial tubes, which we already discussed, bronchial tubes, um, you have bronchioles. These are just smaller tubes that branch off into what are the bronchial tubes. At the end of your bronchioles, you have alveoli. Al 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 this word. Which are tiny little sacs that fill and empty with the air you breathe in and out. You have tiny blood vessels that line the alveoli. Veoli, uh, this word, and this is where your blood picks up oxygen for the rest of your body. Lastly, you have your diaphragm and ribs, and the diaphragm help your lungs bring in air to bring air in and out, and your ribs are there to offer protection. That's it. That is your respiratory system completely simplified, and any problem with one of these can cause you issues. Number one. The simplest and easiest test that can be done, it can be done in your doctor's office, is just your doctor listening to your breathing. Sometimes this is all a doctor needs to do, wants to do, or is requested to do. And they just listen to you breathing with their stethoscope. And chances are, though, it's not going to be your only test, so just prepare yourself. The bigger you are, the more likely you're going to have the host whole range of tests. Uh, the next easiest test that they can run is a spirometry test, and this is another test that can also be done in your doctor's office. 
all you would do is breathe into a machine called a spirometer. It will look like this. Um, it's painless and fairly quick. It's used to see how well your lungs work by measuring how much air you inhale, how much you exhale, and how quickly you can exhale. The test can be used to diagnose asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, otherwise known as COPD, if you've ever seen those infomercials, and other conditions that affect breathing. You may be given now or later down the road what is called an incentive spirometer, and this will be used after your surgery to help with breathing exercises. That is, okay, is chest x-rays. It's possible your surgeon or insurance may want to x-rays of your chest taken before surgery. Uh, chest x-rays can obviously give you a whole variety of things in your respiratory system. Um, they are painless and can be fairly quick as well. Uh, you just have to be kind of cool with being partially nude or in a gown. I mean, it's, it's all it is is an x-ray of your chest. Number four is an arterial blood gas test. I can tell you right now, this one isn't comfortable at all. You see how many piercings I have? You see how I have tattoos? And I was like, oh my god, this sucks. Why am I doing this? It involves a decent sized needle being inserted into your wrist to draw blood. And it would look like this. I can tell you it feels like a pinched nerve. It sucks. It's uncomfortable. It's not... I mean... Depending on your pain tolerance, it's not painful, it's just uncomfortable because you feel like your hand's got a pinched nerve. It, it makes your hand feel weird and you're like, please get this out. Uh, this is done to measure how much oxygen and carbon dioxide is present in your blood. An imbalance of these can be a symptom of a few things, such as uncontrolled diabetes, heart failure, or even drug overdoses. So, number five is an exercise stress test. It's basically the same concept as the one I mentioned in my cardio video. Um, you'll be put on a treadmill, hooked up to some machines that measure your heart and breathing, then be asked to exercise, and your adults can tell the doctor a list of things. Lastly is a sleep study. This is more common the bigger you are, or if you already have some sort of issue with breathing, such as asthma. You may only have to do this test and take none of the others um, to get clearance. Cool with you. A sleep study is where you'll be hooked up to a bunch of monitors to measure your heart, your brain, your lung activity, and then you have to sleep with them. These monitors will give the doctor an idea of what happens while you're sleeping, if you know your breathing slows too much or if your breathing stops. Um, it is often given to those who are overweight because the excess weight tends to cause a problem called sleep apnea because your weight kind of pushes down on you while you're sleeping. Sleep apnea is where you stop breathing and it can be for long periods, short periods, a lot, a little, it depends if it goes all over the place. It can cause, sleep apnea can cause a lot of problems in your actual waking daily life. Um, it can cause headaches, snoring, restless sleep, mood issues, insomnia, etc 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 it can actually cause you to gain weight the likelihood of you having sleep apnea is greater the bigger you are just keep that in mind if you do have sleep apnea you will be given a CPAP machine and this will be required to bring with you to the hospital when you have your surgery because you will need to wear it after you get out of surgery because like I said the pain medicine stuff they give you are there to numb your system if you stop breathing in your sleep and you don't have your machine, you might not wake up. It's highly possible you'll wake up in post-op or the holding area after surgery with the machine already on. The nurses will put it on you while you're kind of out of it. So we made it through the list of tests. Yes. So what happens if something comes back wrong? Again, just like the cardio video, do not panic. Do not panic. Like I had mentioned before in the previous videos, our bodies are not 100% textbook perfect and chances are something will come back. The more tests you have, the more likely something's going to come back. It's just how it works. Just because your doctor comes back saying they found something, it doesn't mean it's going to stop you from having surgery. So don't 
panic. The pulmonary specialist will provide you with you or your surgeon directly with what they found and what they feel your risk assessment is and then it's up to your and then it's up to the surgeon on to where to go from there. Um, sometimes it can come back that something is wrong and you may be more of a risk than the surgeon would like. In most cases like that, the things that are wrong are due to your weight. So if you lose some weight, chances are it will decrease your risk or get rid of the issues completely. And the doctors will most likely just want you to lose some weight on your own and then get retested and go from there. For anybody who cares, um, if you don't care, you can go ahead and skip to the end. Well, first off, I was diagnosed with asthma when I was 21, 20, 20, 21. So I already knew that it was pointless. Um, after getting my history, my doctor requested that I had a sleep study done. I had one done when I was 18, and I was perfectly fine. I didn't have sleep apnea. And then I had one done last year. And between being 18 and now... I developed sleep apnea, but I also, my weight actually went skyrocketed, so, and now here's my dog. So, my doctor requested that I have a sleep study, and in fact, I actually had two. I had one where I went into the facility and was hooked up to all the machines, all the machines, and I slept like normal, and then he read the results, and then he made me come back, and that time, I had to be hooked up to a CPAP machine with the adjustments that he felt I needed, retested to see if it helped, it did, boom, CPAP machine. I got a CPAP machine. I was told I had obstructive sleep apnea, which was due to my weight. So since I had my CPAP and my sleep study done, I have lost over 120 pounds since I had surgery, and I no longer need my CPAP machine. So anybody out there who possibly has sleep apnea because of their weight, chances are if you lose weight, it might go away. So I can't say it will for sure, but it is what it is. So that is the end of this video. Please let me know if you have any questions. Tell me if you've had to have what what you've had done and if you have to have them done or if you will have them done. Tell me, let me know if this was informative for you at all. And please don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel for more. You can follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, and all the links are in the description bar below. And I will see you all next time. Bye!